Good morning and welcome to Fairlawn Avenue United Church on this Sunday in June. And as we gather here, it's good to have you in this virtual here, in this place of community. Whether you are here every Sunday or join us now and then, or if you are visiting this morning, maybe for the first time, I'm glad that you are here because what happens in worship as God, as a God of newness and life meets us in this place, it will be different because you're here, because you are a part of it. As always, Eleanor Daly has provided us with a music service alongside this recorded portion of worship with music clips that continue to express how important music is in our worship at Fairlawn. So just scroll down below this video for the link. Believe me, your worship experience will not be complete until that is a part of it too. Here are some words of prayer to bring us into worship today. In the mystery of the beginning of things, Creator God, you made this planet, rock upon layer of rock, to be weathered and planted, to become a place for living. In the mystery of human life, Parent God, you made us, flesh and blood and spirit and bone, image of yourself, woman, man, and child, for loving. In the mystery of your unconditional love, healing God, you came in Jesus, flesh of our flesh, bone of our bone, to bring us back to our true belonging together. So now, as a community of celebration, of struggle, and of safety, we gather to know your presence, to hear your word, to sense your spirit welcoming us. Do what you will with us. Make of us what you want of us. Change us as we need changing and fill us with your life for the life of the world. Amen. The Gospel of Matthew portrays Jesus as a healer and teacher who tells people good news about God's love for them. Over time, he commissions his followers to the same roles. They are to go beyond the places where Jesus has gone into new and emerging contexts, doing what he does in words and in action. They are told to begin with their fellow Jews, a practical approach to begin where we are with what we know. Jesus sends his followers out, trusting them to perform his own works, the very works that have defined his ministry from the beginning. It is an early signal that the church is called to move beyond Jesus himself. Our reading is Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, to chapter 10, verse 13. Jesus traveled among all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, announcing the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were troubled, and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, 
The size of the harvest is bigger than you can imagine, but there are few workers. Therefore, plead with the Lord of the harvest to send out workers for his harvest. He called his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to throw them out and to heal every disease and every sickness. Jesus sent them out and commanded them, Don't go among the Gentiles or into the Samaritan city. Go instead to the lost sheep, the people of Israel. As you go, make this announcement. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, Cleanse those with skin diseases and throw out demons. You received without having to pay. Therefore, give without demanding payment. Workers deserve to be fed. So don't gather gold or silver or copper coins for your money belts to take on your trips. Don't take a backpack for the road or two shirts, or sandals, or a walking stick. Whatever city or village you go into, find somebody in it who is worthy and stay there until you go on your way. When you go into a house, say, peace. If the house is worthy, give it your blessing of peace. But if the house isn't worthy, Take back your blessing. In this reading, we hear God's voice. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. As Joe read, Jesus traveled. He traveled among all the cities and villages. The stories that we read of Jesus in each of the four Gospels are different from one another. They're distinct accounts of this man who people came to know, but they're consistent in that they are clear that Jesus moved. He was constantly on the move. And he was moved. He was willing to be emotional. He was willing to be vulnerable. Jesus didn't sit still and wait for people to come to him. He traveled about curing and teaching and healing. And when he saw the hunger and need and the confusion of people, he felt profound compassion for them. It's why, in turn, people trusted him. And the church followed in kind because they understood that Jesus didn't tell his followers to establish churches in fixed locations and to gather there regularly in order to be the church. But rather, he asked them to follow him, that they too needed to be on the move. Again and again, Jesus sends them. He tells them to go. He does it in the story that we read today. These first few followers of Jesus must have been anxious and terrified even to be pushed out of their safe bubble that they had only just come to be comfortable in with him, sticking to every word that Jesus said, still trying to figure out why his presence had such a profound impact on them. And yet, all of a sudden, he sends them out to do what he does, to teach 
to heal, to be the presence of God for others, to recognize the presence of God in others. And he tells them to do this without any comforts, without any preparation, with just the clothes on their back. It seems that there was, there was no training. There was no promise of coaching. There were no YouTube videos to explain how to do this. He said to depend on others to take you in. Some people would say that the church has come a long way from that kind of raw sense of energy and purpose and vision. I'm a little less earnest. I'm a little less critical. I think the church in our day is finding our way in new ways but managing nonetheless to figure out what it means, what it looks like to follow the way of Jesus in this new day. There's a whole field of study out there called wayfinding. It's about how stores and airports are designed, how streets are signed and so on. Wayfinding encompasses all of the ways in which people orient themselves in physical space and navigate from place to place. But more broadly, wayfinding speaks of a community like the church, a community of people working to make sense of and find their way through the complexities of modern living. Wayfinding is language that fits for churches, given that the church was first known as the people of the way. In the book of Acts, telling the stories of the early days of the followers of Jesus, they were known as just that, as the people of the way, a way of life in the present. There was not a set a set of doctrines or rituals that were focused on securing one's place in the next life. They were followers of the way that Jesus modeled. As he walked, as he talked, mending lives and healing the world. In this time that we're living through, a time of disruption and disorientation. Christian communities, churches, are once again discovering how to embrace Jesus' spiritual pathway, a life built on transformative practices of love. For us who have not walked with him in person, the stories we call the Gospels function as wayfinding maps the stories we carry about the world, ourselves and ourselves in the world that is shaped by a loving God. They are stories that have the capacity to create new maps for the world, charting out new landscapes that reorient us and allow us to move with greater purpose and connection. The feel of the Gospels is that the followers of Jesus, the church, should be in motion, should be out there, not static, not preserving our comfort and let them come to us kind of spirituality, but embarking on a bold going out into the world that God loves so passionately, sharing what God has given us with those who have not yet heard God speaking to them or felt the touch of God's love upon, upon their lives or have not known how to name that. 
For the church today, it means being in the world where the victims of COVID-19 are, are vulnerable, the elderly, the poor, those working multiple jobs, people of color, immigrants. It means encountering a world where racial injustice and white privilege can no longer be seen as the concern of activists alone, but has become something that we all need to get our heads around and to understand and to address. We too are called to be in motion, to see the need of the world around us, its hungers and confusion, its uncertainty, an uncertainty that we share. And like Jesus, we're called to be moved with compassion and to respond with empathy. We're called not to sit still, but like him, to be on the move and to be open to those that we meet on the way. We do that knowing, as the former Archbishop of Canterbury, William Temple, once said, the church is the only society that exists for the benefit of those who are not its members. The gospel impels us to interact with the world beyond our walls, in our neighborhood, down the street, in places far away, places where compassion can reach, even though we may not physically be able to go there ourselves. The work of the church is essential. The work of caring for the lonely, the marginalized and the oppressed is essential. The work of speaking truth to power and seeking justice is essential. The work of being a loving, liberating and life-giving presence in the world is essential. The work of welcoming the stranger, the refugee, and the undocumented is essential. The work of reconciliation and healing and caring is essential. The church does not need to open because the church is never closed. We who make up the body of Christ, the church, love God and our neighbors and ourselves so much that we will stay away from our buildings for now until it is safe. We are the church and we can be on the move as Jesus was showing the world that we are not any one of us. We are not alone. Our ministry together as Fairlawn Avenue United Church continues apace. Through each day and week in this disrupted time, our ministry emerges from the web of relationship and faith and community life that draws us together as Fairlawn, adapting and working through these current limitations our financial needs to sustain our life and work through this extended period remain. And so if you are on par, pre-authorized remittance, thank you. Thank you for ensuring our ability to continue Fairlawn's life and ministry together. Thank you also to you who are mailing in your offering by check we're collecting the mail and we appreciate that. For others, if you go to the website, www.fairlawnchurch.ca, you'll see an image of a green button marked donate, and that will take you to secure on online ways to support Fairlawn through this time. Your support is greatly appreciated. 
as we come together through virtual means, our hearts and our prayers continue for one another and for the world. And so I invite you to join me in our prayers of the people. A new morning dawns. Even in uncertain times, new discoveries and opportunities lie before us. God of time and of seasons, we come before you in this day and in this place where journeys come together and find new energy and direction. You create this good earth coming alive again in this summer season with all its vibrancy and richness. And you make each one of us in your likeness, filled with life and love and possibility. We thank you for the humanity in which we share with all of its diversity and its wonder, with minds to think for ourselves, with arms to reach out to others even from a distance, with feet to walk your way of truth and of peace. Spirit of the living God, partner on our journey. Ground us and enfold us in your holiness and mystery. Splash summertime epiphanies on our paths. We are a world that is desperate for your touch. We need your touch of healing. We need your touch of love. We need your touch of liberation. We pray that here in this gathered place, our words and our prayers, spoken and acted out, will touch sore places in the life of people around us and people who are near to us. Touch gently with healing the brokenhearted, those of fragile mind and body, the bewildered and the lost, the angry and the grieving. We pray for one another and bring to mind others for whom our concern runs deep and keep silence as we hold them close in our hearts. God of newness, God of risen life, touch us with your compassion and renew us. We pray in the name of Jesus and with words he offered to his friends, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. After this service, there will be a time of conversation, coffee hour chat online using Zoom. And the details for connecting to that are in greetings. And they were included in the service notice that you received this morning for this time of worship. Also, later today at three o'clock in the afternoon, I'll facilitate a discussion for those who are interested 
in delving further into some of the ways our current life experiences are reshaping how we think about faith, how we read the Bible, how we're experiencing spirituality. We're calling it Spirited Explorations, and we'll use some of my recent Sunday reflections as stepping stones for a discussion about faith and spirituality. I hope you'll join me. And now let us bless one another as we go from this time together. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the God of life to you. As we live into the Spirit's hopeful future, go in peace and with joy. Amen.